All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Felipe. I'm a fifth year PhD student in Tonius Group. Um, and the following work is what we have been doing to optimize full solar cell devices. And the first part, I'm going to tell you some general perspectives we have been thinking about on how to relate machine learning with um, like device optimization. And then Danny, on the next talk, is going to give you an example for gallium marginal optimization. So the two talks are connected. Um, the overall goal, as we saw today, there are a bunch of different uh, figures of merit that you could pick if you're going to optimize a material or a system. And as the system becomes more complex, it becomes more difficult to decide what to optimize for. And uh, for instance, in the case of solar cells, so if we optimize for, uh, usually in laboratories, if we optimize for energy conversion efficiency, we get cells that are very good, but maybe the process is not repeatable. Uh, that's what gets you to an end chart, but not necessarily translates into cells that you can like a uh, marketing industry. Uh, for that, you need also like in your process, you need high yield, low cost, and low degradation rates. So the question becomes how, if we were going to use some optimization target for this, how would you embed these other considerations into, into an optimization target? Um, for instance, for perovskites, it tends to be very time consuming to optimize devices because of a stack of materials. We have to pick the materials, we have to pick the processing conditions. And then like we need something that actually, uh, sorry, we need like some objectives that actually uh, make sense for what we want to do, right? Um, this is an example of two different processing conditions, two different annealing temperatures and solvent ratios for solution processing of perovskites. And what you could see is that if you plot the efficiencies, the distributions vary a lot. So there are points in the parameter space or in the process condition space that are like close to zero, like the one on top, a lot of cells are in zero, and others look mo more normal like this one, for instance. So the question becomes, do you optimize for the maximum efficiency, for the mean efficiency? What do you care about? Um, so one principal approach is actually to um, combine some techno-economic value, techno value uh, considerations into, in, into account. So we could start with efficiency distribution, convol convolute um, a function that tells you the value of efficiency. So how much dollars, for instance, do you get for additional efficiency? And uh, you could compute, for instance, the total revenue that you would get at, at producing cells at a certain condition. The overall motivation of this is that not all efficiencies in your distribution are actually have the same value. And you have some market competitive efficiency above, w below which you cannot actually sell any sales. And you also have some uh, relation between dollars and efficiency that then depends on, uh, for example, the minimum sustainable price in the case of perovskites. Uh, this could be linear or this could also be, you could imagine quadratic. If you have some like high value application like a space satellite, or you only care about having just one very high efficiency cell to get into nature, for instance. So, um, so that depends. So at early, at each stage of actual development of solar cells, you will get these efficiency distributions, and you'll have different. Uh, you'll care. Uh, you will care about the distribution of efficiency in different ways. For instance, uh, an industry. A distribution that is like very well concentrated around a peak, for example, a log normal distribution. Uh, you'll have that according to whatever your efficiency could of is, and your value you'll, you'll get a certain total revenue or metric. And if you have something more like a lab distribution, higher variability, a lot of zeros uh, that are like failed experiments, for instance, uh, then you might, depending on your cutoff, you might care more about just having, for instance, high high efficiency cells. But there is a transition between two, and that transition happens as you want to market sales uh, or take sales that are like from laboratory to market or your startup company. So uh, this kind of objective and the whole motivation of finding this objective is to, according to a certain cutoff, according to a certain value that you could estimate, it could tell you what condition is better or even if your whole uh, design choices for the architecture are good. Uh, this is just a quick example with solvent ratio and temperature. You can see that. If we have maximum efficiency, minimum variability, minimum yield, 
they happen at different points in uh, the parameter space, the, mac the optimus. And if you take a, you apply a revenue function, you will like find the optimum in different points of the parameter space um, that are arguably more harm, have more likelihood to become like industrial cells. So that's one part of the of the process. But the question becomes, how do you go from um, knowing that you have this point? How do you actually decide what to optimize next? Right? We usually what we do is like we measure efficiency, we measure the current voltage characteristics, then we choose the process variables, but then we the experimentalist has to choose what to do next. And that requires a lot of intuition, a lot of, of trial and error. Uh, one thing you could do uh, to aid in this decision is to actually infer material properties. Uh, you, could, uh, you could do additional measurements that will take more time, or you could uh, uh, frame it like a machine learning inference if inference, inference process in which um, you could start by a simple physical model at some other things like a denoising uh, autoencoder. So you will get some robust way to extract uh, information, uh, physical parameters for like lifetime or source recombination velocity from current, current voltage characteristics. Um, so for our specific problem, we can think about this as you go from efficiency distribution to material parameters. You find your optimum, and you can extract at this optimum what are the optimal material parameters that uh, you want to look at. And that depends on what you're optimizing for. For example, if you're optimizing for maximum efficiency, you will have a distribution of things that are important. And if you're optimizing for total maximum revenue, or like for other, for other figure of merit, you will get different parameters. So sometimes this will tell you, oh, you have to optimize your bulk or you have to optimize your surface, and that's having a higher impact in what you do. And I think that's a very good introduction to what Dan is going to show next. But just some quick conclusions about that is we have to define the figure of merit clearly if we want to optimize solar cells. And the, the problem of optimizing solar cells is also a problem of inference, right? So you have data, you have experimental data, how do you extract material or device parameters from it? And also, one of the key things is that as you move from perovskite solar cells that you make in the lab to actually industrial cells, how do you bridge this gap? And what do you optimize for at what moment? And that's all. Thank you. <laughs>